All right, our guests are joining us. Uh, give us just a few minutes here to kick things off for our August virtual open house here at Milo Sanctuary. Our hosts are warming up, our cats are getting ready, so we'll be with you all in just a few minutes. Uh, as I love to do as we warm up uh, the group here, I'd love to see in the chat any questions you have throughout the day, please put them in the chat. And as always, I'd love to see where all of our friends are joining us from. So if you wanna share in the chat while we get things rolling, I'd love to see it. And we'll give everybody just a few minutes, probably till five after the hour to join us before we get things started. Michelle, could you try your video for us again, please? I sure did, and it is not working. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, for those of you kind just of joining us, we are troubleshooting some video issues here. Uh, I'm able to share my video, uh, but our other panelists are not at the moment. So we're just having a little Zoom hiccup today, and we're going to take a few minutes to finish troubleshooting. But I assure you, our cats and panelists are excited to be here and ready to get things rolling. So give us just a few minutes and we'll get this sorted. All right, Michelle, give that one more try, please. Yay. Ah, hey, yay! Good job, Sonia, our goddess of everything computer, you know? So I am gonna hand this over to either Tina or Connie, um, two of the best friends and volunteers in the world. So hold on just a sec. There you go. Because I know you all want to see me, right? So no, nope. point it. Right? Then she can't see what I she's can't see what I'm Okay, then turn it around. Yeah. We're having deaf technical. It's been a okay. week, guys. There. Hi, I'm Michelle. Um, I'm the founder and president of Milo Sanctuary. I want to first welcome you all here. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, we're we keep saying we we're praying that we'll be able to go live soon with a live open house, but for now, we hope you're all enjoying our virtual ones. And we have a few little surprises I'm gonna to talk to you about later, and we want all of your opinion on the few ideas that the board of directors has come upon. And, um, and then I'm gonna show you a few of your favorite cats, and then we've got um, Adam and, uh, well, sorry, we've got Ben Ben's wonderful humans, uh, Sandy and, Adam joining us. And then in a little while, we have uh, Pookie and Shannon, who are the moms for Nala. So we've got a great lineup today. I'm super excited. I've been looking forward to this all week. So let's take a look around the annex. 
Okay, so uh, let's see what's going on in here. Well, here's here's one of everybody's favorite. Walter, say hi. <laughs> There's Walter. He is our official greeter. He is sitting on his uh, flagpole, we call it. And uh, he's just the sweetest little guy. And almost all of these cats need sponsorships. And you can go on our website. And if you are sponsoring, bless you. If you would like to sponsor, we'll take any donation that we can. And there's different sponsorship levels. So check it out. And uh, this is Phoenix. Phoenix has been with us a long time. Um, he's a sweet boy. Gosh, he's got to be six or seven now. And um, he is madly in love with one of our um, assistants here at the sanctuary. Hi, Phoenix. Oh, boy. He doesn't particularly like me. All right over here, we have Grayson down here, one of my favorite babies. Grayson came from Mexico, and uh, he's just the sweetest boy. They're all calm right now because they've been fed. Um, and this. This is, this is Nimbus. And Nimbus came to us with the worst eye issues you've ever seen. I mean, here, come here, let's show everybody your pretty face. Um, they look way better now, um, but when we got him, the conjunctiva, the part that's pink now is bright red and literally bulging out of his eyes. So we took him to our eye doctor and we are working on getting it back to normal. And then one of everybody's favorites, Miss Beatrice. Um, uh, Beatrice came to us from Mexico. She's blind. She's been with us a long time too. Um, and she's kind of, well, she's not kind of, she's very bossy. Um, and in the cat tree, we have Jasper. Jasper was actually one of the first blind special needs cats I ever rescued. And he is just such a sweet boy. And up at the top, hi, is Jelly Bean. And we would love, Jelly Bean is a beautiful orange girl, and we would love to find her a forever home. She's three-legged. That's, that's it. So um, she used to be Marvin's BFF, but Marvin had to come live with me for a while because of the um, some medical issues he's been having. So Jelly Bean's here. Hi, pretty girl. Yeah, she's very <laughs> Michelle, we have a great question uh, since we've just passed a few cats that have uh, eye issues is why do you think so many stray cats or cats that are found outside uh, have uh, eye infections and eye issues? Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, a lot of the cats that we take are born um, with what they call eyelidogenesis and entropion. Eyelidogenesis means that their eyelids didn't grow all the way and entropion is when your eyelashes curl in. Um, that's just a, a complete mutation. And usually that comes from either mama hat carrying a gene, or it could be mama or mama got into something before the kittens were born, or it's also caused from in breeding. Um, we have a couple that I've taken that, um, were our purebreds and they're almost blind because they've been inbred so much by backyard breeders. So that's uh, it. the infections. Usually what happens is when mamas give birth outside, it's dirty. They don't have access to clean food, clean water, clean environment. The kittens get an upper respiratory infection. Their eyes get, I've seen eyes literally bulging out because uh, they rupture and that's all preventable by trap, neuter, return is these sick kittens that we're taking in um, that end up being blind. And some of them went blind because of trauma. Uh, we've seen some pretty horrific trauma here. So it's kind of a little bit of everything, but uh, medically it's usually born that way or living in a not clean area and then the trauma. And we had a question that I think you kind of answered, but we're um, going to elaborate on it a little more. Someone wanted to know if we promote uh, adoption of any of our cats. And of course, you passed beautiful Miss Jellybean. So would you like to tell uh, our guests a bit more about uh, adoption through Milo's? Yes. Um, so right now we have three three-week-old um, babies and their mama who suffered a horrible jaw accident here and once the kittens are old enough, they're totally normal, no special needs. They'll all go up for adoption. I'll, I'll actually may take you in there to show you uh, mom and the babies. 
And then we also have Athena, who is a gorgeous Siamese uh, tortoiseshell. We have um, Poppy, who is a purebred Siamese kitten. Um, she was taken from a hoarder situation. So the best thing to do is we're trying to update our pet finder and you can get there through our website at milosanctuary.org and just click on adoptions and you can go to the pet finder account for that, for, for there. And there's lots of, for adoptions. Some have special needs, some don't. Thanks, Michelle. And we're also, I know it's early in our tour around Cotter Cove there, but uh, we do have a few requests uh, wondering if Kai is with us on the property today. Uh, no, Kai does not live at the sanctuary. Kai lives with me um, because of his ongoing issues. Um, but whether we do it virtually or in person, he will be here next month, I promise. And don't you guys get enough of him on the on social media already? Connie drives herself crazy doing it. She basically lives at my house taking pictures of the superstars. All right. Well, who else is in the room with us today? I know there's somebody right behind you. I see a tabby head. I see a calico bod. Who's who else is with us? So this is Hermione. And Hermione is blind, deaf, and neurological. She was found as a tiny kitten in the middle of the street, running in circles. Um, we have found ways to keep her calm and happy. Um, yes, we have. Um, this is her crunching half. So when she starts having what we call one of her episodes, we put her on this and the texture, and she can't hear, but the texture and stuff, she loves it. Um, our wonderful friend, uh, Jan Mankey, makes these for us to uh, Hermione's specifications. Um, but this is, she spins when she gets overstimulated, this is what happens. Baby girl, yeah, you're so pretty. You're so pretty. And she's very sweet. And then over here, we have Kabitha. Yes, <laughs> we do, and Kabitha has, can I show them your cute little legs? See her little cute legs. Yes, and we brush her constantly and her, for, for some reason it's kind of curly I don't know what that is about but uh, you see she's in a chair she gets up and down totally fine um, she came from a very bad situation and uh, it's taken her quite a while to settle in she the first few months she just hid all the time and wouldn't use the bathroom so we also have pee pads down in pee pad holders and that is for our cats that are either seniors or have limb deformities and make mobility very hard to get in and out of a litter box. We do have a couple of, um, I don't think there's in here. Is there one in here now, the handicap litter box? Uh, we, we just took it. Okay, oh, yeah, I like, you can write that down. Uh, here, let me show you the <laughs> handicap litter box. Uh, Michelle, we have a question about pee pad holders. This is a, a new uh, gadget for some of our guests. What are pee pad holders? How do those help us keep our pee pads in place? Uh, right here, let me show you. So you can get these online, you can get them at PetSmart. Basically, if you have a dog or a cat, you just, it's two pieces and you put the pee pad in the middle, you put that down and you snap it closed and that's it. And then you can take these out and wash them. They are great, we use them all over outside of litter boxes because you know, if you've got a cat that tends to you know, stick his behind out from the litter box or anything like that, these have saved us. So that's what we use them for. And then, oh, and the baby pig I was raising, which I'll introduce you guys later, he uses pee pads. He he's, uh, was at my house and he uses pee pads. So this is a great invention. This is, um, it's a low litter box. It even has kind of a little step for them to go into. So that's one of the uh, handicapped, we call it the handicapped litter boxes and we have them spread out all over the place. Um, and that I think is a, oh, hello, Walter again. Oh, here's Moon Pie. Here's our Moon Pie. She is loving life. She is a good girl. She has twisted back legs. And um, she came to us again from a not great situation. Um, her sister had to have double um, uh, knee surgery and she got adopted and was fine, but nobody has, 
really spoken up for her, but so we put her in the lifetime care program, but she's super, super sweet. She is the one that uses the pee pads. She cannot get in and out of a litter box. All right, Sonia, are we good to bring on our wonderful friends? We absolutely are if they're ready to join us. Are we going uh, next to Ben Ben Cats people? Yes. Fantastic. Yes. And I just want to thank our special guests today for taking the time out of their lives to join us. And um, uh, they'll tell you all about the special needs cats that they have and why they've adopted them. And my goal is to really do education on special needs cats because you see them here, they're cats. And as my friend Mick, who had Oscar and has Juno and uh, George now, they don't know that they're cats. They just, they don't know. They have no limitations. So, um, okay, with that said ado, may I introduce you to one of the most adorable cats on social media. Yes. We've had the pleasure of meeting him and two of the best humans in the whole world. Welcome Sandy and Adam. Hi everyone. Adam somewhere in our house cuddling Dilly while Ben's oh. in the bedroom. So oh um, my heavens. Ben Ben. <laughs> you sure you don't want to just send him here, Sandy? I know, right? I mean he wakes us up in the morning, so <laughs> uh, he is so Oh my Look goodness. At that. It's so, a perfect time. Because <laughs> he's that's what I just said is everybody's relaxed because it's after food time, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So oh my. do a favor if you would, Cindy, and tell us how you got bed bed. And then I happen to be in love with your little CH girl. And I know you have some other special needs cats. So maybe um you could tell us about living with them kind of, you know, what you do in your routine. And um, I just kind of, like I, I said to you, I, I really want to normalize special needs cats. Absolutely. So, uh, um, so tell us about Ben, ben first. <laughs> so Ben came to us in 2016. He was found on the downtown east side of Vancouver um, with severe kind of open wounds from being attacked by another animal. He has a deformed ear. Uh, they, the doctors, the veterinarian said he likely had a bone infection from his bite wounds not being treated. But unless you do like a bone tap, you don't really know. So we put him on antibiotics for six months. He wow. has um, all of his vertebrae in his body, except for maybe one are deformed. He, his neck, all this, the vertebrae in his neck are fused except for one point. So he can only really groom the front of himself <laughs> and he's learned how to groom his back feet, but in terms of being able to jump and walk and really be a normal cat, we were told that he wouldn't be able to. Um, so we did like you guys got a fancy litter box for a corner and cut the front of it out so he could kind of shuffle in and out of it. We laid yoga mats uh, throughout our house so he could get some traction and then just played and let his muscles grow. From there, we added like, this is the bedroom, don't excuse the mess, but we added these adorable stairs so that he could get up and down really easy. Um, and anyone else who has like geriatric pets, they're really good to help them so they don't have to jump down. Um, Jerry is up on the window ledge. <laughs> he only has one eye, but we thought he might have had cancer. So we took his eye out. Turns out it's not cancer, which is really great, but he's our 13 year old. And then we do have Norman who's down here. Hi. <laughs> Uh, and Norman, what a <laughs> he's definitely special. He doesn't think he's a cat. Everyone's his best friend. He can't smell because he has mycoplasma, which is a fungal infection in his sinuses paired with rhinitis. Oh. So inflammation all over. Um, so he can't really smell. So he thinks everything is food. He has a very mild 
form of CH disease. When we got him as a four month old kitten, he walked along the walls. He has a wide stance when he walks. He has no cat social cues at all. A cat could be hissing at him and he would be like, you still want to be my friend. I'll still play with him. <laughs> yeah, we have So he needed a special home. Yeah, and that's, that's the joy is to take these beautiful cats that nobody else wants and to watch them blossom and be able to share them with the world. Exactly, and it's kind of cute, him and Ben, because Norman has no cues and, and Ben is a diva, and so they pair really well together because Norman doesn't really care if Ben's being spicy. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so I think it makes the relationship even better. In terms of any added care, it, I think special needs by tr like caring for them, it just makes your bond with them that much stronger than having like maybe a cat that can do all the things and you don't really need to help it too often. I think it just makes you love them even more and it's not that much work, right Beth? Yeah. It's really not, you know, we just um, had somebody drop off, um, I mentioned earlier, a mom with a bad jaw thing and her kittens and mom is a turtle mama. She's nursing, she, she's eating. Um, so a special needs cat to me, and you know, when I do the seminar talks on special needs cat, I always say, how many people in the room think a one-eyed cat is special? How many people in the room think, say it's three-legged cats special needs? And I said, okay, so my bar is much higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it, my bar is so much higher. Now that we and, have Dilly, I think our bar is extremely high too now. <laughs> yes, of course it is. Of course it is. So um, I went back into the main house because I was having some internet problems. So here we are. Um, and that's Connie. Y'all know Connie. Um, so tell me about your um, your little CH girl, Dilly. I love her. I'll see. Our, I'll see how exploded our living room is. So all of our floors have these beautiful mats. I love it. So that she doesn't hit her face. We just got rid of our carpet because she actually doesn't make it into the litter box. So for her setup, we use this with, covered in pee pads and she's on a pee schedule. Hi, queen. Oh, God, she's so beautiful. <laughs> she is definitely different. Are you gonna cheer? Oh. oh, well, you know, it's kind of like what Herman and Bear's mom and dad do is they have a pee poop schedule. They put them in the litter box, you know, yes. all that kind of stuff. But it's she's more, she's, she's more on the upper severe, is she not? Yeah, she can't like walk like a normal cat at all. She kind of flops around and eventually gets where she's going. She mm -hmm. has her favorite spots and we do give her like floor time. She has to stand slash sit while she's eating. So it makes her move all of her legs around. Uh, we use a splash mat when she eats so that when she does spray it everywhere, it's contained. That's mostly for Ben's food allergies because she eats turkey and Ben can't have poultry. So it also keeps it contained that way. <laughs> Look at this. I know, I know uh, Patsy uh, who has Herman and Bear is on with us. And I know right now I can hear her squealing from where I am. <laughs> yeah. Just the, we, actual, the funniest ahead, thing with sorry. her. Yeah. Oh, she likes to be pet backwards. Like if you go from her nose to her tail, she does these little stretchums where oh. she throws herself forward and backwards. But if you pet her the, like this way, she actually falls asleep. That's interesting because most animals do not like their fur pushed oh my, back. No, it's like her. the most soothing thing you could do is go from her shoulders to the middle of her head and she'll like pass right out. Wow, I feel like that when I go to, when I'm lucky enough to take some time and go get a massage. Right. You know? Oh yeah. Oh look at it. Look at her. She's so she's so cute. She's yeah, so that's... cute. And we same thing. Like um, somebody sent us these really nice. They're foam stairs. Oh wow. So she does fall on them. Uh, they don't hurt her, and she can claw them with her nails and climb up. And then the top comes off, so we can wash it. 
Wow. But other than the bed, this is her second most favorite spot. <laughs> I don't blame her. Look at that little oh. print queen. She is. You know? And how did you get her? So we had just lost Penny, who was our senior cat. Uh, and one of the one of my colleagues uses a vet slash groomer and brings her German Shepherd there. And so she, she knew we had lost Penny and she walked in and saw her in a cage and sent me a video and asked, oh, is this what Ben has? And I was joking. I was like, no, that's what Norman has, but can I have it? <laughs> and she was at a vet clinic. So I assumed wow. she was owned and my colleagues like, oh yeah, you can have it. Somebody found her on the side of the road. And she was only seven weeks old. Like she still had all of her deciduous teeth. She was tiny, tiny, tiny. And uh, she, she is still even tiny. She's only three kilos. Um, Gosh. Like eight, like eight pounds. She's so small. Um, and we were on our way to, it was right before we were coming to CatCon to see you guys too. And so we went out and met her. And at the start, they told us she was a boy. And when we got, went to go meet her the night before we left for California, they're like, oh, just kidding. She's a girl. And Adam just melted. And so, oh, of, course. <laughs> yeah, of course, well, yeah. it was so cute. Cat, we already had three boy cats and we're like, oh, four and only Mo. Maybe, but if she, if he needs us, we'll take him. And then we yeah. got there and it was a girl. Where she? Everything it is meant to happen for a reason. Oh yeah. And then thankfully the the technician at the vet hospital watched her for a week while we were in California. And then when we came back, the first thing we did was go pick her up. <laughs> uh, of course you did. <laughs> and we uh, of we, course you did. Her I know to uh C A. Yeah. And they're so cute. And I don't I don't know where they are. They're uh, probably napping, you know, it's hot here today, as usual. She's like, so, um, they lead like such normal lives. Like they're, she's so spicy. She's got the biggest personality, like other than sometimes her signals are the same and you don't know which one she's telling you. It's trying to figure it out is fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, but they do teach you. And that's the other thing I tell that tell everyone is, you know, they, they will teach you what they need. And yeah. that's one of our very old naked men. That's Toby. Toby. He's been, if you hear the meowing in the background, that's him because I'm not picking him up immediately. So, <laughs> and he's got that old man. Hey. You know? So, so you said that Ben Ben is allergic to poultry. Yeah, we brought him. How? Yeah. How did you find that out? We found so allergies and animals they come differently than us unless it's like an anaphylactic reaction and they break out in hives. But allergies and animals come with like ear infections, itchy feet, itchy skin, like just scr wanting to scratch all over. And after we would bring him to events and he would eat a bunch of chicken. He would, his eyes would get really runny. They would get really red. All of his feet would be so itchy. So we switched him to a hypo diet and it was like, we could keep it at bay, but if he got into anyone else's food, he would be itchy for days and he would get his foldy ear would get like black discharge. So we sought out a yeah. dermatologist. Yep. And he, they actually think he has environmental allergies mixed with food. Um, and so Oof. they put him on a beef diet and, but he didn't like it. <laughs> uh, of course. Of course. So I've switched him to, so he's on um, a medication every other day just to help keep his allergies at bay so that we can feed him like a hydrolyzed protein, like a cut up really small chicken protein where his body doesn't recognize it ah. and he does really well his his ears do get a little dirty but I we're also in the middle of summer and there's lots of dust and bugs and everything so but he was just so uncomfortable you know when you you pet a cat and their whole body twitches he was just yes. doing that all the time wow. and I was like this, this is not comfortable 
<laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, right now I'm the mosquito's favorite treat and it's not fun to be scratchy everywhere. No, no. You know, um, would, would you mind um, if maybe some of our followers, and I'm sure they're your followers too, um, uh, uh, if we could uh, open it up for a little Q&A? Sure, absolutely. Just okay. a reminder, Sonia? For, yep, a reminder for those of you with the questions, go ahead and um, put them in the chat. Uh, Stephanie would like to know if Ben Ben has tried rabbit or duck in place of other forms of poultry. Well, yep. duck, is, duck is poultry. Right. We have tried duck. Um, he adores duck. Um, and I might try it again now that he's on this medication. Um, but the duck without the medication, he would instantly flare up. Like within a couple hours, his eyes would get really watery and all the, like the skin around his eyes would be red. We haven't tried rabbit. The other diet that I could, I was looking at getting into was like a venison. And then somebody mentioned raw food, but it's just so hard with five cats to try and feed raw. Um, but I, rabbit would be a good one to try too. Yeah, our little girl, um, Johnny, um, who came to us from Turkey, she can only eat rabbit. Anything else, it just, and, they, and it affects her GI tract. Mm -hmm. And once we put her on rabbit, she's been fine ever since. Gosh, so good. And like this adorable thing, she will only eat turkey. Like I've tried <laughs> I've tried salmon, I've tried chicken, and she knows the difference, <laughs> and she won't eat it. She's so funny. Yeah, and a lot of, I still do a lot of uh, behavioral consultations and stuff, and um, somebody, somebody, uh, one of our, in fact, our um, volunteer coordinator has a cat that's having, for her whole life, horrible, horrible ear problems, Aww. and I, I went over and I examined her, and I said, do you feed her fish? And she goes, no. And I said, let me see a can. Sure. Third, fourth ingredient, fish. So I had her put, told her to put her on a fish-free diet, read the labels. And um, I'm hoping that little Lucy will feel better very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I found that fish has a great uh, allergy component to it. And um, so we, we tend to not feed a lot of fish, but you know, it's avoid a hundred pounds worth of, you know, when you get a donation of food, I'm going to sit down with the boys. <laughs> so, yes, I know. Well, I know you've got mama on the floor now. I'll never get up, but that's okay. <laughs> um, any questions, Sonia? Uh, no, just apparently there are a lot of Dilly fans in this channel because oh, I mean true. I thought Ben Ben was blowing up the channel and you know as a longtime Ben Ben fan myself I expected that but uh Dilly's kind of edging out for the win here uh we do have one question before we wrap up with uh uh Dilly Ben and everybody else over there which is what's the daily routine for meals like with Ben Ben how do you feed all these different diets and different spaces to all of these cats great great question we um Everyone, so we meal feed, uh, A, because when animals are sick, the first thing they're going to do is not eat. And I really need with five to know who's eating and who's not eating. Um, everyone has their feeding stations and everyone gets their medication before they eat. Some, Norman gets meds twice a day and Jerry and Ben get their meds once and then every other day. Um, and so they all flock to the kitchen and each food is portioned out into like they're in Tupperware containers. And then we give everyone like a level scoop in their rooms and, and shut the door. Dilly is the more advanced eater where she needs, she eats out of a silicone baby bowl. She gets like half a can to three quarters of a can mixed with water. And then that needs to be warmed up. And then we have to sit with her while she eats. And then recently she got a hot spot mostly because I wasn't drying her off as well. And so now she gets baby wipes after she's eating and then a full dry of her face. And she wears a bib that's waterproof to help her stay dry. Um, from there, 
once Dilly's done eating, uh, I'll open and check to make sure everyone's done. And if they haven't finished at all, we'll give them a couple more minutes, but sometimes they don't eat all their dinner and that's usually because they wanna lick her bowl. <laughs> and so we'll just pick all the food dishes up so that no one can go <laughs> and lick the bowls. <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of work, but worth it to keep everybody fed and allergy free then for sure. Really, And it's like, it probably takes maybe by the time my coffee's done brewing in the morning, everyone's had their dinner or their breakfast. And then in the evening when I come home, uh, same thing, like I'll start cooking my dinner and then get them all theirs. And it, it honestly only takes maybe, maybe 15 minutes. It's not that long at all. And it's so worth it to know who has an appetite. I know at one of our places, our air conditioning fell out of the window and at breakfast time, Jerry didn't show up. And I knew he had climbed out the window and ran away. <laughs> so I really also use the, the meal time to see who's coming, who's awake. Does anyone look lethargic? Like it's such a good thing to meal feed. <laughs> and that's what we do here at the sanctuary because we have so many on special diets and we don't free feed at all, um, except in the feral houses because we can't really monitor yep. uh, yeah, so, but that's what we do. And everybody has either a little crate to go into, you saw the cages and annex, those are for feeding, or they have a little crate or they go into a separate room. Um, yeah. And uh, that's that's really the only way to do it. And, and I encourage everybody to do it that way instead of free feeding. It's yeah. much. Yeah. All right, and that was, that was it for questions. Great. Sandy, smack at him for me, but um, thank you for joining us. Really, really appreciate nope. it. Oh, um, this is one of her. And uh, hopefully, her... we will. Oh, she's so yeah, cute. Hopefully... Boy, does she remind me of Bear. <laughs> we're excited. Yes, gosh, we're, dark. we're uh, coming from Canada, so we're excited to be able to visit and go back to cat conventions if they come back and meet everyone again. I know Ben hasn't lost his desire to meet new people, that's for sure. <laughs> I know, and, and we have a couple new phenomenal cats that we would love for people to meet in person and at the cat show, at the cat cons. And hopefully, you know, hopefully we can see each other next year at cat con, you know, it would be nice. Would be so nice <laughs> but thank you give, give yeah wouldn't it and please give adam a hug for me i will and um yeah and i'll talk to you guys soon thank you again no problem we'll stay and listen to everyone too <laughs> okay cool all right and michelle i have some questions about uh your companions down there on the floor um so Tell us about Toby. I've noticed that Toby is both a tripod and missing an eye. One tell eye. us a bit about Toby. Yeah, um, we got him out of a high kill shelter. Um, he had um, cancer on his leg. We had it removed and he had, we, he, the eye had been removed before we got him. Um, but we're guessing that, uh, that it was taken out due to injury or something like that. But yeah, he's an old man. He's a very old man and he's super sweet. Just incredible. I love senior cats. You know that. And he's just so, so, so sweet. He's just such a good boy. So I just knew that we could provide him a happy home for as long as he's with us. Um, Michelle, and he's you part of our senior. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Huh? No, go ahead. He's a senior program, right? Isn't he? If not, we'll get it. Yes, you can see Toby's picture on our website in the senior care program, along with our other elder cats who, uh, you know, seniors come with their own special needs uh, that all seniors come with, but lots of our special need cats have some bonus ones like missing eyes, tripod that make them perfect for uh, Milo Sanctuary. Yep. If I always tell the vet, you know, if, if when we go to pick up a cat, I go, just go in the back and pick the most broken cat you have back there. It's ours. Um, and and it's true. But I would, I mean, look at this. 
you know, from death row to this. I mean, that there's, this is why I do it right here. And then this big blob over here, that's Aiden. The one you wrote the story about, Sonia? Yes, can you believe it? Look at, I don't know that anyone who hasn't seen Aiden since his rescue would even recognize him just if they passed him in the room. Aiden's transformation has been amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it has. When we got him out of the shelter, he was one of the worst mange cats I've ever seen. He was literally skin and bones. Um, he weighed probably about six pounds. Um, he may have eaten a few meals since then. Um, and then his fur grew in long. So he's a, he's a good boy. And this sweet baby over here, um, that's uh, Callum. And uh, he and his brother came to us and Callum has deformed back legs. And sadly, his brother Declan uh, passed away from FIP. So, but he's good and happy. And then here, hang on. Oh, if I can get up. You know, still not easy to get up with a, with a broken arm. Okay. And here's one of everybody's favorites. <gasps> it's Jack. It's Jack. He's doing so good. And he's so happy. He's such a great guy, aren't you? And still the biggest flirt in the whole wide world. Now, you Jack, know, he's such Jack had a dental recently. Now, did that affect his signature tooth? Nope. Here. There it is. There it is. There's Jack's tooth. Yeah, no, it's kind of like Herman's tooth. Um, uh, I told my vet, I'm like, unless it absolutely has to come out, please don't take it out. And she's like, no, it's fine. I'm like, oh, thank God. I never thought I'd be saying that about a cat's tooth. So, but you know, Michelle, we had a question um, in the in the chat and I thought I might have seen Miss Fennel back there in the room next to the couch. Uh, one of the fans is asking about Fennel or Daisy. Are they with us today? Uh, I'm so bad. No, neither of them are with us today because they uh, Fennel um, had a big outing last week. She went to a child's birthday party and was a superstar. And um, Daisy was having a lot of trouble losing weight. The other cats were picking on her. So she's at my house, but I am happy, happy, happy. Maybe if we go virtual next month, um, Connie could be here at the sanctuary and I could be at home and show you the kitties that are happily there. Great. You know, okay, so here's the beautiful Siamese that I told you about. She's about six months old. She is a purebred Siamese. Um, she does have uh, some damage to the one eye, um, but she can see fine, beautiful blue eyes. And she came to us from a horrendous hoarding situation. And then there's Frankie the Muppet. Hi, Frankie. Yeah, he's a... Uh, he's very uh, upset about being on camera can you tell you know and he's just he's just the cutest thing every time i look at him i have to smile so and thank you for everyone who gave him such love this week and thank you for those of you who could sponsor him it's wonderful and here's one of my favorites there's johnny the happier pirate It looks like Michelle might have lost her signal. So we'll give her a minute to dial back in and get back to the cats. I'm guessing we just had some internet drop over at the sanctuary. So I'll give it one more minute for her to get back on. In the meantime, I'll try to answer some of the questions coming into the chat. Uh, Susan asked us if- uh, okay. our, oh, Are you back, Michelle? Yeah, um, um, I was, went to pet her and I knocked myself out of the oh, thing. Well, I was just going to answer a question, which I'll continue answering while you get your video back and we spotlight you. Somebody had asked if our cats sleep in cages at night. And actually, now that you're back with us, I'll let you go ahead and uh, answer that. Michelle? Sorry, it cut out. Go ahead, what? Oh, I was just going to answer a question while I was waiting for you to join sure. us, which is, do our cats at Milo's uh, sleep in cages at night? Um, okay, that's, that is an excellent question, by the way. Um, 
Yes and no. Um, so some of the ones that like our two paralyzed cats, we have uh, two little, you guys know Lily, but we have a new one, which I'll be sending to you soon, Sonia. It's a darling little orange kitten. Um, he, uh, the both of them get uh, put into one of the cages you saw in Annex, one of the great big cages with um, a soft pad underneath and then pee pads on top. They get bathed twice a day. They get their diapers changed every two to three hours. But at night we put them in there so that they can air out and not have to wear a diaper. So, um, so that's, that's it. Uh, we feed in there. We also use the cages if somebody has a medical uh, condition to monitor them and also for introductions. So that's, that's what we use it for. Fantastic. Uh, who, but, well, before I get to the next question, uh, who, who is this handsome sugar toad friend? This is Gridley Gobblechops. I thought so. And uh, I just bring it when, when he was at my house, cause I got him really small, bringing him up here was not easy for me because I'm very selfish. He's one of my favorite cats, but um, he's doing great. He's sweet. He's such a sweet boy. Hi, love. Hi. How you doing? And you see, um, he's totally blind. Uh, Johnny, you know, walks strangely. And I want you to see that they are on in our guest room. We have a guest room here at the sanctuary where you, uh, you know, we're hoping when we go back to live, you can um, pay a little extra and spend the night with the Milo's cats. Um, and, but they're on the day bed. So they all got up there. So again, disabilities, what disability, right? And then down here is Timus. He um, is about 15 years old and I adopted him out when he was eight weeks with his sister and the people returned him because he was meowing too much and wouldn't give me back his sister. So it's been a really rough transfer, you know, a transition for him, but he's doing much better now. And then this little muffin right here, hi, that's Bixby. Bixby is one of the little CH boys. Oh, sweetheart, you wanna wake up? Look at that face. So, um, and they are, you know, they're moderate, a uh, little towards severe, but I mean, look at that face, come on. Cutest thing ever. So, and this is our old lady, Annie. She is also in the senior care program. Um, she was thrown outside and a kind lady uh, was taking care of the, you know, one of those wonderful people in the neighborhood who feed the cats. But um, she was, she passed away from cancer. And so um, her niece asked if I could take Annie. And Annie's little tail, hang on, see that? She's not a minx. The people who had her before we were blessed to get her, um, she got a tail injury and instead of taking her to the vet, they tossed her outside and the tail got all infected and fell off. She's very lucky she's alive. So she's, she's one of our seniors. She's adorable. So that's, uh, I'll show you more in a little while. Um, all right, Michelle, um, Nala Cat people have joined us. <gasps> Yay! All right, so let me do an introduction. Uh, Pookie and Shannon are two of my longtime friends. Um, they have Nala Cat. Um, they've recently started their own food brand and um, they are generous and kind and truly, and I'm not saying this, but I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. They truly are an inspiration to me because they just, they have the biggest hearts in the whole world and they've always supported us. So with that, welcome. Shannon and Pookie. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Oh. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Hello, baby. And that was like, oh the my gosh, what a dull face ever. Yeah. <laughs> you know. We're a little shy now after that introduction. <laughs> okay. There's no way in any galaxy, in any planet, you two are shy. Um, <laughs> especially you, Shannon. I should come. Um, but uh, we've known each other a long time. Yeah. You know? Nala is so. 
can't get her. And uh, conveniently. And you guys still need to come to the new sanctuary. They came up to our old sanctuary and brought us presents, and it was wonderful. And and um, they've helped us out, supported us, and um, I'm very blessed to call you guys friends. And I miss you. Oh, we miss you. You know. Yeah, that's the very beginning when you have an event in I think it was in Pasadena. Mm -hmm. It was like yeah. how many? Yeah, that was the cat show that we did. Walk a mile in our paws, and you uh, you came with Nala, and uh, it was an amazing event. You know, and uh, that's we we kind of met briefly before that here and there, but then that's when we we really started chatting and getting to know each other so mm -hmm. i'm just going to show jack because he's just too cute um so how is the gang down there how are all your beautiful fur babies they are doing great. every yeah, everyone is really good nala has really embraced the whole like stay at home vibe <laughs> i like, should go she, get her. yeah try to get her okay i'm gonna yeah. do so it. Nala <laughs> Like even we went to the vet last week just for her routine checkup and even her vet was like she she's gained a little bit of weight and she she's embraced her um you know home and not traveling <laughs> so so she's it's that it, it's that covid weight we all game it's extra snacky second breakfast you know she's living her best life and um coffee's great coffee um is doing well. He continues, you know, his his remission. He's happy and healthy. Everyone is good. Everyone that, is. That yeah. is so good to hear. You know, it's so good to hear. And we miss, um, we miss seeing people. We miss hanging out. We miss the events. We miss seeing all the kitties. But um, hopefully, we can hang out soon. That would be really nice. I'm just going to get in my car one day and just come down and visit you guys. Good. You definitely. Like, I haven't met the whole tribe yet. I've only had the pleasure of meeting Nala and uh, Luna Rose. I have to try and for her and put her in the box so yeah. she wants. She doesn't. There we leave. go. We have. Uh, <laughs> there you go, folks. The superstar of the entire world. She just. You don't spoil her at all. I can see. No, no one did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she. Great. I mean, it's it's hard to believe that that people haven't heard of Nala Cat at this point in her stardom. But uh, for those that might be new to Nala, can you tell us a bit about her? Um, I uh, Nala is the most followed cat on Instagram. She has four point three million on IG and about two point six million on Facebook. Uh, I adopted her from uh, Animal Shelter in LA back in 2000, when was it, 2010. Then I had her, I started her account in 2012. So Nala was one, one of the first. One of the first furry yeah. babies <laughs> with their own persona on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. And now she has a, now she's proud of all the other kitties that are, you know, having a good time on social with her. So it's been fun. Mm -hmm. It's been really fun. Most of our friends are, are we've met because of Nala. And so we feel really, really lucky. She's going to leave us now. She's, she might leave she's us. Trying to no, 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 she's turning back on us. She's like, I've had enough of the paparazzi. And, uh, um, but you know, like um, one of the thing that I'm, that I feel like we, we met a lot of awesome people through mm -hmm. this journey and it's been fun and it's, how many years now? <laughs> like a long time, nine years. Oh now. yeah, yeah. Nala, yeah. Nala really taught us how to live our best life, how to push ourselves, how to how to think beyond um, us, and you know because of that, she um, you know helped us build companies and helped us do more for other kitties. She's growling a little bit, but yeah. Well, she you know um, <laughs> so n even though Nala's in a box, she thinks out of it, right? Yeah, she does. Yeah. She does has us doing things that make us uncomfortable every day <laughs> oh i know how that is trust me wow. you know i'm i'm i had to put my my shyness and yes guys there's a time when i was shy um aside because it's whatever these guys need they come first mm -hmm. you That's know 
So, oh, I'm sorry. Did I offend you, Jeff? So tell us, I'm so excited to finally be talking to you guys about this. Tell us about your food company and, you know, what, what inspired you to start it and just, just tell us about it. Um, well, the, the very, very beginning process of it, we were like, you know, everyone, all these brands email Nala to advertise and we're like, why isn't Nala advertising Nala? And so we, we brainstormed what are some things that we could, we could create um, as her legacy. How do we make Nala, Nala's legacy and her mission live on forever for generations to come long after even Pookie and I aren't here? And um, so we thought what, you know, what is sustainable and how can we make a difference? And so we went down that, um, she's trying to play. She wants to play now. So we <laughs> went down the, you know, the pet food line and we thought about litter. Litter didn't seem as fun as, as food. And, um, let me get her. There you go. and so, but then we were like, we don't know how to do that. So we, 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 we kind of tabled the idea for two years. And then we, the stars aligned and we met some amazing people who we thought we could do this with. And um, so that's where it all began. We, that's, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. And then, so we were just all in. And so we focused on that uh, pre-launch for about a year and a half. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So our, our vision wouldn't was- be, It wouldn't be a video unless the cat, yeah. so, the cat so what, what got in it. Yeah. <laughs> So our vision was to create a super premium, um, complete and balanced uh, food line that was affordable. We, we saw that, that there was a gap in there where it was, if it were super healthy, it was super expensive and overpriced. The markup on pet food is insane. And we thought, how can we do better? And how can we build something so successful that we can feed the kitties? So our vision is to be the kind of like the, the rescues uh, food choice or shelters. Um, but that takes time after we build and scale, we can focus on those programs, but that's our goal. Uh, super premium, affordable, Nala's legacy and continue to help for generations to come. Yeah, and um, I personally, thank you for sending me a few bags and you guys, I've told you this story, but um, it arrived you know, in a box shipped beautifully. And um, I went upstairs to bed and I came down and they had not only chewed into the box, they chewed into the bags. <laughs> so, um, and to this day, I'm like, you guys, really, you're just mooches. Um, but yeah, I've never, I've seen them chew into bags that are left. I've never seen them go chew into a box to get the bag. So, I, and they love I love yeah. it. And yeah. you know, yeah, Nala's been, and you know, I'm super like, did we lose audio again for Michelle? Yeah. yeah I don't know what it's the internet up here. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> there we go. You're good now. I think. Yeah. It's the heat. Okay. No, don't, don't. Chat. <laughs> okay. Well, now it's my turn. <laughs> cats really do what they want you know <laughs> so um so yeah i mean uh, you know how picky i am about what we feed these guys and um you know it, these guys just loved it they just loved it and um i'm looking forward to the day when you guys are big enough that uh you know we can get some more of that incredible food so what ingredients are in it um what ingredient meat well it's a meat meat first grain free and um the exciting thing is is we are actually working on a whole bunch of new recipes that we oh yay we're in r d we're the final phase we're doing packaging and skews so um we're excited to sh share those with you guys first so you'll you'll be the first to try it before it's available we'll make sure we send some to you guys but oh I'd love to, and yeah, I I just see this just taking off big time. And so, if somebody wants it now, where can they get it? I uh, we're D to C now. We're, we haven't entered retail yet, but we are working on that. Um, so it's available at lovenala.com, and we've put that URL in the chat for everyone as well. Um, 
Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Um, are you? We have some questions from our guests for our guests, if that's okay. Awesome. Um, one of our uh, guests has asked how you choose uh, the content that you share, uh, like on Instagram, on social media, and do you ever feel pressured to meet a demand for content from your fans or from any other, you know, outside sources? Uh, <laughs> content is, I mean, we've been creating content for a long time and do we feel pressure sometimes? I feel Some, like sometimes, I do. <laughs> sometimes yeah. we feel pressured because everyone is leveling up. Everyone's content is getting better and better over the years. And, you know, there's more, the internet, Instagram specifically has way more content being served than there are people to receive the content. And so Instagram has to tighten up the algorithm and serve only the things that are converting or doing well, or that's engaging. And so if you aren't leveling up and you're not <laughs> creating something unique or funny or, or a surprise or, you know, very, it's, it's all about the TikTok style now. That's what's winning. And um, so you have to be um, flexible, but we get frustrated too. We can tell when we wake yeah. up and we post something, we know the algorithm changed again. We're like, here it goes again. So back to the drawing board on what we, you know, the angle or, or more like style. It's about the style. The style matters. It is. Yeah. And you know, Connie does all of our uh, all of our social media content and um, pretty much all of it and does all the photos. And, you know, Connie, when you get an answer, it's usually Connie. I mean, this is what she does now. Thank God. Um, <laughs> but it's so funny. We we had a silly little video of one of our blind cats on the kitchen counter because she climbs up there. And first of all, you always get the, why did you put that poor blind cat on the counter? And we're like, we didn't, she climbs up there. You guys have been around the blind cats. You know, they do anything they want. And uh, it's just a cute little video. It went viral twice. So that's the other thing is you never know with content what's gonna hit and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. true. Sometimes we spend a lot of time, we're like, I swear this is gonna do well and then it doesn't reach as many people. And sometimes we just post whatever's in our phone and then it does really well and we're surprised. So I think the magic is not overthinking it. Just remember to have a good time and Instagram is gonna be Instagram and it's gonna be a different Instagram next month. <laughs> and you just gotta yeah. ride the wave and you know. Yeah, I do. Connie is sitting next to me. And here, let me let you say hi. Hold on. There you go. Hi, guys. Hey, ladies. Um, so, uh, so Connie does all of all of that stuff. And she'll be like, it, they did it again. And I'm like, algorithms? And she's like, yes. And I'm like, yep, that's just what they do. Yep. yep. <laughs> they, they, they twist and they turn it to favor different products that they're pushing, whether it's Reels or IGTV. And, um, and the explore page. So you can always look at the explore page, but it does help to use trending songs or trending themes. And, but it's, there's no uh, secret to it, I think. Yeah. I think you just, they want you to create, be creative. But Connie, you're doing a good job. Thank you for liking and commenting on all my stuff. Yeah, I appreciate me too. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we, we love you guys. Love you guys. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> it, it helps because when you, when you, when people just bypass it without reacting to it or saving or doing something, Instagram thinks you don't care. So they stop showing it to you. So the people who are saying, I don't see your stuff anymore. I'm like, because you haven't liked it probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all, it's all about the likes folks, you know, and yeah. we try to answer as many as we can, but I've always got Connie running in 50,000 different directions at once. Stop nodding your head. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, she's, uh, she's, she's, she is definitely amazing. So, and we met at the cat, one of the cat, uh, cat uh, shows we did. That's how we met. Well, the same one. Oh, that's the same one you guys were at. Yeah. So yeah, we've been around a long time. So, um, and it's just so fun to see everybody's social media grow and getting different, you know, educational or whatever, just even sometimes just funny stuff out there. And uh, Milo's uh, 
uh, my lead supervisor here at the sanctuary, Marissa, who you all will be meeting later. She uh, she took over she took over the tiny TikTok account we have, and she blew it up. Aww. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, there's so many different social medias, you know. So, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So any other questions, Sonia? Uh, no, I think I think we're good on questions for now. Just again, lots of love for uh, Nala Cat and lots of comments about, you know, yep, we, we like things on social media. We're following, we're sticking with it. So it's all great to hear from our fans. Thank you. Um, yeah. Can we congrats Ben's people? I heard they, didn't they just get married? Yes. Congratulations, Ben yeah. Ben Cat people. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> it was such a magical time. And we did bring Ben to the rehearsal so that he wouldn't be afraid of outside. And he walked down the aisle for the rehearsal. And then on the day of, he's like, nope, not having any of it. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my, my brother was the my maid of honor, my man of honor, and he carried him down the aisle. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, it's royal. <laughs> That's a typical, typical cat, right? Well, exactly. Good choice, Ben Ben. <laughs> nice. yeah. Well done, Majesty. Well done. Yeah. Exactly. He still yeah. stole the show, I feel, but it was so it was such a great time. Thank you guys so much. Yes, congratulations. It's wonderful. I love the um drawing of you two with Ben Ben and that was just so cute that you posted it was such such a wonderful thing so yes, it was a it was a great time there you are oh, cleaning <laughs> so oh my gosh no it was epic we tried to figure out how to bring Norman but there was just so much happening that one cat was good I think <laughs> Uh, yeah someone asking about agent goose oh how is agent goose oh agent goose is fine he's on a uh he's being a detective right now he's doing an investigation <laughs> at the litter box <laughs> of course he is yes 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 well i i was saying earlier i got to drive up here with my uh baby pig that i raised at my house and uh, yeah He's, he's it, bringing him up here was so hard, but he and the dog made it a mission to destroy my entire backyard. So, and now he's big enough that he can come up here, but I'm gonna miss him. Yeah. So he's, he's just such a cute boy. And oh, I, I, when I went to vet tech school, there were two pigs um, in the training program. I could not stand them. They were mean, they would bite, they would charge. And so of course I'm like, I don't like pigs anymore. And then now I'm the biggest pig lover in the whole wide world. So yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and uh, Stella Bella. Oh yeah, Stella, she's upstairs. <laughs> oh, Stella Bella, yeah, that's cute. Cause we, we had a cat named Stella Bella. So I was like, that was a long time ago. So, um, well, you guys, I just, I love seeing your faces, all of you. And I, I just love connecting and I just, you know, I miss you guys. That's all. Yes, yeah. Good to see your face also. We miss you. We'll, we should have everyone over. How many people are on here? 48, I think. <laughs> <laughs> from all over the world, you know, <laughs> I mean, literally from all over the world, but hey, <laughs> I'll come and I'll bet Connie would come. Oh yes. Oh, yes. So, you know, let's uh, let's plan a day and um and we'll we'll come hang out. Let's do it. Sounds good. Yeah. Yes. And thank you again, you guys. Um I love you and I'll talk to you soon. Love you too. Thanks for having us. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right, Michelle. I know there's more cats in that room as we head toward wrapping up the August open house. So what yes, else? I, I, you know, you mentioned there's a mama and some kittens and there's some other exciting yeah. stuff happening there, right? Uh, yep. Let me walk in the back. Hold on. Oh, here's the kitchen table. Here you go. Uh, this is Thaddeus right here. He is your good boy. And that's Pumpkin. And that's Galaxy. And way in the back over there 
is, what did we name her? <laughs> Amethyst. Okay, guys, seriously, we've taken in so many new cats. I can't keep them straight. Where's Lily? Michelle, can we get a quick close up on Galaxy? We did have a request earlier to see Galaxy, maybe from a fan or a sponsor. There's your boy. Say hi, Galaxy. You're okay. such a pretty girl. Yep, they're living the dream. And yes, they have their own fish tank. So yeah, she's, and here's another perfect example of the table, lying cats. So it just, it just, when people come here and they're like, oh, should you help them down? And I'm like, just, just watch them. And then, oh, oh, there's the princess. <laughs> there's the princess and say hi, Marissa. Hey guys. So Marissa's our senior <laughs> um, uh, supervisor here and Lily's her baby. 100%. Yes, she is, oh, you're such a princess. But she didn't put on her dress today, so I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> um, and then this adorable baby right here, he's super tiny. His name is Dustin, Dustin yes. And he does have a last name. Um, uh, what is it? I don't know. I don't know either, guys, but it's, I know he's Dustin. Um, so that's Dustin. There's uh, Toby, and there's Sparkle. And let me walk in the back. Oh, and here's Twizzle. She also came to us from Egypt. Hey, hi. Yes. And let's go this way. Um, this is what we call the uh, the cat, one of the cat's rooms. Well, they're all the cat's rooms. But in here, um, we have litter boxes. See all the carriers over here? Um, these are carriers with their names on them. And they go into, they know. When it's dinner time, they run up to them. And this is the medication board for everybody. And then we have our own IDEX machine where we can do our own blood and all that kind of stuff. And I already showed you the guest room with the uh, very important guests. And this is the cat room. And um, I just love it in here. And uh, where is everybody? We have... Um, there's Maestro taking a nap and again, blind, but let me back up. Here we go. That's what he's up on. Um, and then, um, hi, Valentino. Valentino constantly has eye issues. Um, we had, we're dressing them and it gets better. And then in the summer, it gets bad again. So, and then let me walk in my office. So this is, this is my office where I come and do wonderful Milo's things. Um, and down here, and I don't want to disturb her because she just got here. Here are, oh, it's really dark. Hang on, let me turn on the light. Where's your mama? And this is the babies. So there's a black male, a tabby male, and then a little gray tabby female. Look at that face, come on. So once they're weaned and we get them spayed and neutered and stuff, these guys will be up for adoption. Um, yes, kittens, yeah, it's that time of year. And then let me let me just pull you guys out for a second. Here, there you go, hi. Where's your mama, is she hiding? Yes, so mama was found on the street pregnant. Um, really messed up jaw um, a kind lady Sarah took them off the street she had the kittens and we're sending all of our love and prayers to Sarah who is undergoing chemotherapy next week um, so she couldn't keep them any longer and so we took them and look at look at that face I mean come on there is nothing cuter than kittens well you're just adorable too so hey would love name suggestions folks for the three kittens. Um, where is mama? Where's your mama? Mm -hmm. mm, Mama's under the couch and I'm not going to disturb her, but I'll put a picture of her up later. Uh, the kittens are about three weeks old. Um, and, um, and they're, they're just adorable and they have no special needs. So that's pretty much who's in here. Um, yeah, it's pretty quiet today, you know? Mm -hmm. And Michelle, you wanted to wrap up by talking to our friends about uh, 
new cats, which we've covered, uh, and any upcoming events? Do we have anything coming up as we head into the, you know, the last few months of the year? Yes, we do actually. And um, uh, after I wrap it up, um, uh, well, why don't you two come, Marissa, why don't you two come join me for a second? And, um, and uh, we are, uh, oh, let me move. Um, hang on, I'm gonna hand oh, this to Jack. Tina. Oh, well, Jack can move. All right, sorry to keep you guys over, but I'm just having too much fun. Um, you start me talking about animals and I don't shut up. So this is Marissa. Uh, Marissa is our lead supervisor here at the sanctuary. Uh, and at the sanctuary, she is my eyes, ears, left hand, right hand, and everything in between. Yep. And uh, she's she's just amazing. Our staff is incredible. We have we are so blessed finally to have the best staff. And you all know Connie, and you all know me. Um, so we are starting a raffle September first for a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hand quilted cat blanket that was donated to us. Um, and so we're going to run that for a couple of weeks, and then I'm super excited. We are going to be, you've seen our little logo. I support special needs cats with uh, Tommy on one and then one of our blind kitties that got adopted wants it on the other. We're gonna be doing a, a t-shirt fundraiser for those. And um, I'm hoping you all will uh, support that. I'm really expecting those shirts. I'm gonna buy a few, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, and that's gonna be my wardrobe <laughs> from now on. Oh, and today I'm not wearing a Milo shirt. I am wearing Oscar. The blind cat, 10 years. And um, I don't know if it's uh, the t-shirt fundraiser is over yet, but go to um, Klaus um, or Juno and you can get one. Oscar was was one of the first blind cats to ever hit the internet. And I am fortunate enough that his family are personal friends and I adore them all. And when Oscar passed, it was like one of my own passing. So um, you saw the new cats. Um, we do have a couple more that just arrived. I'm not going to walk out there because I'm lazy. Um, they're in ISO. Um, and uh, then we have a couple new old ladies that are at my house for now. And um, yeah, so I would like to just for you know five minutes, open it up to questions from any of you about anything about the sanctuary, anything like that. Fantastic. Well, I've been answering a few questions here in the chat about where fans can get Milo's merchandise uh, on our website, milosanctuary.org. Uh, and we've been fielding lots of really creative suggestions for names for our kittens already. So thankfully we do get to keep the chat from all of our uh, online events. So we'll be reviewing those uh, after our event ends for the day. Um, we did have uh, a question about, um, why some of our cats wear collars and some don't? Um, well, they are all supposed to be wearing collars, but uh, you know cats, some of them just do not want to wear them. Um, I'm a big believer in collars um, only because that's their first line of identification if there's an emergency or they get out, but everybody here is microchipped. So, um, so we do the best, you know, and sometimes we try to put collars on them for when you guys can visit us, you will know who's who. Um, so, and I'm gonna show you one other kitty that's gonna be up for adoption, uh, Tuna, which I'm still changing her name. Um, <laughs> Tuna just had eye surgery, she had entropy, and she is literally the sweetest cat in the world. She's about two years old, um, beautiful calico, perfectly healthy, nothing to be done on the eyes, but uh, she really needs a home. So there you go, so that's my thing. All right, so any other questions? Well, we have a question actually for our fans, I believe. We are um, thinking about doing some online training and seminar content uh, that's gonna be brought to you from the sanctuary, recorded, shared on our YouTube channel. So we'd love to see your suggestions either here, uh, on uh, on our chat 
sent to us on Facebook or at info at milosanctuary.org. If there's content you'd like to see from the sanctuary, likely recorded, please send us those ideas so that we can continue to provide content outside of our open house events uh, that you might find engaging, or if there's certain cats you'd like to see a feature of or anything else you'd like to see from the sanctuary, uh, please let us know. Uh, Michelle, we're getting a couple questions about when we might be able to resume live open house events in person there at the sanctuary. Um, hopefully soon, um, once the staff here is fully vaccinated, um, we'll be able to open up. Uh, I'm just keeping a really close eye, like all of us, um, on what what's happening with numbers. Because as I hope most of you know, cats can also get COVID from us. So I am just super protective over the cats and over my staff. Um, so hopefully soon, I hope, because I miss all of you, mm -hmm. um, but the staff and the animals' uh, well-being are always my number one priority. Mm. After, real quick before we go, we're doing a very limited Milo Sanctuary wall calendar. It should be out end of September, uh, but it's going to be very limited. So it, just watch our social uh, media for, for that. So we got a lot going on. And then of course the holidays, which are always fun. I'm at least hoping we'll be open for Halloween, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Cause those are my three favorite holidays and I love to share them. Lots of positive feedback coming in about the calendar. We're also getting some wonderful suggestions for some content um, that we can produce for our fans caring for senior or hospice cats, handling cats with anxiety issues, uh, maybe a Daisy documentary, a, you know, Daisy's life at Milo's, loving this. Um, so, uh, you know, keep those ideas coming. We're going to document them all. Cats with mobility issues, I love it. Our fans have such wonderful ideas. Um, somebody asked if we can repeat about where we get our shirts. Our shirts come from milosanctuary.org, which is our website. Oh, a memorial room. Uh, we do have a memorial space and one of our fans is asking um, what, what's in the works for our, um, our dear friend Chad who left us recently. I know we talked at our last open house about doing something special for Chad and, and um, you know, fans are asking uh, what we might have in the works. Well, I have to say that Tina's here holding the camera for us and uh, she was uh, Chad's spouse. And uh, we're all going to cry now. And um, he was one of truly the most genuine, kindest human beings on this planet. Um, and it's been very hard for us, but we are planning a memorial at our next open house. Um, and uh, I have a couple little surprises for Tina then. And um, we will always keep Chad. Chad will always live with us in our hearts, you know? So, and thank you guys for making Tina cry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry to trigger the room, but I'm so glad that our fans uh, are aware of Chad's contributions and how special he was to everyone here at Milo. So thank you for mentioning Chad. Uh, you know, he's with us here today and always when we talk about Milo's sanctuary. Um, no other questions coming in, but I am still everyone loving these ideas for content. I can't wait to help produce some of these cool videos and get them up on our social platforms and on YouTube. So thanks for those ideas. Um, I've taken all of them down. Again, if you have any others, please share them with us. Reach out on social media, email via our website, or certainly come to another event and continue to share your ideas with us. Much appreciated. And I want to thank all of you, first and foremost, uh, for being here and supporting us. We cannot do this without you. And I want to thank Sonia, our fabulous hostess, who always is just knocks it out of the ballpark. Um, and um, I want to thank uh, the staff for all their hard work and dedication mm -hmm. and same with my volunteers. And I want to thank Ben Men's people and uh, Nala's people, their moms and, and uh, mom and dad of Ben Ben and Dilly and all these other beautiful creatures for joining us today. If you don't follow them on social media, now's your chance to go do it. Um, and um, and thank you, just, just thank you so much. We miss you all and praying that next month 
uh, we will all see each other in person, but we are not going to stop the virtual open houses for our friends all over the world. So I think that's it. I love you guys. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you.